Welcome back to episode 23 of the Guardian Project podcast. I am your host, Andy Flory, and I have a question for you. Okay. Uh, now that Oko is banned in standard, am I still an elk? You're still an elk. Damn it. <laughs> and I'm your co-host, Mike Coyle. Hey, Andy, what do you call a person who drinks pumpkin spice lattes, wears North Face and Uggs in the wintertime? <laughs> Andy? Snow-covered basics. <laughs> <laughs> Or, oh, I, I can relate, but I don't have Uggs. Please listen carefully. That's true. But I, pumpkin spice lattes, I drink peppermint mochas all year round, but... All year round. Literally all year. <laughs> it'll, it, it'll be like June, everybody goes to Starbucks, I'd like something really crisp and cold, and I'm like, can I just get a peppermint mocha, extra whipped cream, please? Thank you. <laughs> and this is a podcast where we talk about all things Magic the Gathering. But mostly Commander. What do we have on the agenda today? Today we are going to start off with the uh, BNR announcement that happened. There was lots of stuff on this one. Uh, we are going to talk about a question that was posed uh, online uh, about someone who is having an issue with a particular play group. Okay. Um, we're going to do uh, a new reoccurring segment, uh, Commander of the Week. Okay. And then we're going to finish up with a little fun game of Would You Rather... Oh, this is your first would you rather. This is my first would you rather. Are you looking forward to it like like the previous one of no sleeves versus no, sleeves getting spilled? On? Yeah, I'm, I'm dreading it completely. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with the first one, the, our first item here, which is the ban and restricted announcement. Actually, today we are recording early on Monday and the Pioneer announcement is still not out yet. We will check throughout the recording sesh, but we don't know um, what may or may not have been banned in that format at this time. Right. So that's why we're not mentioning it. If Oko does get banned there as well. Well, I wish we could go back in time Yeah. or forward and then back in time forward. Then back. Go, we, we need to go time travel forward. Do we get go the back info. to the future? No, we're going, we need to go back to the past. We're going back to the present, back to the present. We want to go back to the present. <laughs> <laughs> so in standard, we have three bannings. Three. Oh, Oko, Thief of Crowns, Once Upon a Time, and Veil vale of Summer. I believe that's a green card, green card, and green card. You can argue green, blue. Shh, you know, I mean, it is. It's a good <laughs> argument. <laughs> yeah. Would you say green's pretty good right now? Green. Uh, right now? Probably not. Oko is Broco or just green? I, I still, I'm, I am sad that these are banned because now what is there to, what are you hoping to open in a pack of Throne of Eldraine now? Uh, not much. I mean, maybe the uh, the Great Henge. Oh, that is a good card. It is good, but it's green. You're hoping green to get is the, less supported now. You're hoping, yeah, but that's better in green black, I think. But yeah. if you open like a foil extended, someone had tweeted today that they opened mm -hmm. a um, extended altar, the the alternate artwork of an Oko that had partially removed the the foil promo. Mm. Mm -hmm. One of the folks from MTG Fast Finance, and they were like, "Of course, I opened this today." <laughs> yeah, it's yep. like, yeah, yep, that yeah, that's gonna sad. Happen. So, um, Oko's banned. Uh, some of the reasoning was seventy percent of the decks at Myth Mythic Championship Richmond included that card, mm -hmm. um, based on the data from a high-ranked arena traditional best of three play. Um, only. Uh, one of the other 10 most played decks, which is Simic Flash, the deck you play, yes. had a favorable matchup against Simic food-based decks, and it was only just above 50%. Um, and that food decks maintained an average of 50, 53% win rate non-mirror um, matches. So, But now uh, my Simic Flash deck did run four copies of Once Upon a Time. It, it did lose that. Yeah. So your mana fixing and keeping one land hands is no longer as easy that is correct um they also said that thief of crowns or oko thief of crowns has reduced the metagame diversity and the diversity of gameplay and standard by shutting off build around creatures and artifacts and uh oko's power level has grown higher than is healthy for the current metagame and for future environments including and they even referenced theros beyond death and forward yeah so they had to make this decision um and they said to address green's general diamonds, they also chose to remove once upon a time and uh, veil of summer for uh, from the environment. Uh, once upon a time uh, is one of the key reasons green has been overrepresented and contributes to a high consistency of strong starts totally agree. and color fixing. Yeah, I agree in a format where there, there is no real fixing. Despite the fact that you can play once upon a time in any color deck and cast it for free. If it's your first spell of the game, that is true, which sometimes I do on turn two. Yeah. Never 
I, I would say never play never play a once upon a time on someone else's first turn at the end of their turn, but you can't anymore because it's now banned. It, it banned. I guess you could still do that in modern, but don't do that in modern. Do it on your own turn. Don't give them any info. That's right. This is one card that is suspected uh, for the pioneer banning if that ends up happening. Um, more so than Oko from some of the uh, talk that I've heard online. Uh, Oko seems to be... Um, kind of a a, a, nom, a nombo, if you will, against uh, some of the hardened scales decks, sc- decks that like to put plus one, plus one counters on all the creatures. Like, mm-hmm. okay, make my one, one with four plus one, plus one counters into a three, three with four plus one, plus one counters. That's fine. Go ahead. Yep. So I, I would suspect once upon a time might be seeing the ban hammer from, from the pioneer, but Oko will probably survive. Sure. And then finally, Veil of Summer. It said um, that it is playing an important role in preventing the metagame from being able to Mm self-correct. And that cards that did something like this in the past, like Autumn's Veil or Display of Dominance, Autumn's Veil is most commonly, um, I would say, most closely related to Veil of Summer. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just way better because Autumn's Veil said, spells you control can't be countered by blue or black spells this turn, and creatures you control can't be the targets of. But... um, Veil of Summer then on top of that gives you hex proof from those and lets you draw a card. Yeah. It's just an all around better card. It's just an all around better card. So that's standard. But Oko wasn't only banned in standard. Well, he was banned on Arena in Brawl, and Wizards decided that they were gonna up that and just ban it in paper too. Yep, no more paper brawl. No more paper Oko. And it's no not, more paper Oko Brawl. No more paper Oko Brawl. Which Paper Oko Brawl. Paper which, you know, he's really good in standard. Uh, and he's really good as a, you can always cast him. He's always in your starting hand, quote unquote, for brawl in standard. So that. Oh yeah. If he's the, if he's your commander, if he's your commander. I mean, he's banned in, in the format completely. Sure. Not just if, if he's like, it's not legal if he's in your 59. Oso, Oko also one time turned a black Lotus into a three, three elk and that one in a vintage tournament. So yeah, the Oko, elk one, the elk one. Yes. <laughs> The Black Lotus, I wonder if that, I'm assuming, first time ever in Black Lotus's history, that it swung for the win. Yeah, probably. <laughs> There's probably not a Tezzeret that turned it into a 5-5 five five before. <laughs> this is probably the first instance. Um, aside from standard, we also have um, a banning of Renin 6 in Legacy. Yep. And then we have Narset Parter Veils banned in Vintage. Um, it said Narset Parter Veils contributing um, to one-sided games at a higher degree than is healthy. And then Renin 6 um, was especially powerful in Legacy because of its interaction with Wasteland. Yeah. Um, and it said, and the historic prevalence of the metagame defining one toughness creatures like Mother of Runes, Thalia Garden of Thraven, and Young Pyromancer. Um, prior to the addition of Renin 6, to team or Delver decks, the legacy metagame was generally looking healthier, so they needed to ban that in legacy. Yep. Makes sense. I'm wondering if I doubt it if they would ever see the same thing in modern, because at least one of those arguments with the one toughness creatures, you could make that same argument in modern. I mean you do still have cards like Tarmogoyf and stuff that aren't gonna get hit by it as as easily, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, that minus one to deal one damage to any target, I think, is less commonly used in modern. I would I would assume, but I haven't watched Ren and Six in the Jun deck too too much. Um, and whether or not it's, I mean, it's not returning wasteland. That's for sure. That's for sure. It's not doing that. It cannot do that. It can't. So, um, I did not have an Oko anymore. I had actually traded out of that. That's good. Um. But I do have my foil Narset and foil Veil of Summer, which I'm honestly not worried about because they're both in a deck. Yeah, I play them both in Commander. I think Narset part of Veils is, it's not fun in Commander, but it does its job. It does it. it and the Veil of Summer also does a lot of work in Commander when you're playing and you don't want something countered. I played in my Gitrog deck and I play Autumn's Veil in my Gitrog deck. I played in Momir Vig. It's really Simic good. Simic Visionary. I would like to cast this one elf. And when you say nope, I say yep. Yep. But if you say nope again, well then, then, then well, I guess you're going to have nope. to try to say no. Nope. I'm going to have to try and say yep again yeah. <laughs> with another counter spell. Um, I still own one copy of Once Upon a Time. I haven't slotted it in anywhere, but I don't have an Oko. I have like six Once Upon a Times. I, I mean, they're good cards. Yeah. You can you can use them any, in pretty much any format. Not standard. Except standard. <laughs> Maybe not Pioneer soon. We'll find out. It's It does only cost 
does it cost two? Yeah, one and a green. Yeah, it costs two, so it's still not bad. No, it, and you know people are using it in in modern for mono green Tron, uh, to to fetch for uh, creature or land. I'm fine using it, using cards like that in Commander though. Yeah, I don't I don't mind digging digging five deep, four deep. It's like a I mean it's like a almost like a Seder Wayfinder, but you can grab a creature too. Uh, it doesn't have a body like Seder doesn't go to graveyard so in a lot of ways it's completely different from Seder wayfinder and in one way it's like Seder wayfinder well, it does it does go to graveyard it goes to graveyard. the rest of them go to the bottom of your library right. in a random order correct but it is looking at the top five and grabbing a creature or a land so and sometimes that is enough oh yeah so um Let's move on to our question that was posed online. Yes. Um, there was a question about someone who was having an issue with their play group because they play lots of mass removal. So we did talk about um, the top colors or the top cards played in each color, including mm-hmm. colorless last week. And we saw in multicolor, there was mostly removal Tons and some mass removal. Mm-hmm. And um, the question online was, what commanders can I build and play with that are resilient to mass removal without relying too much on protection spells? So... Um, we both came up with our own notes, mm-hmm. and why don't you go ahead and start? So I I think it's important to note that even even if if you want to play a certain type of meta in your play group, and everyone else is playing mass removal, you can just to start out, you can ask them to maybe cool it down on the mass removal so you can play your token deck, or just play a different deck for the night. Yeah, you. you most could, people have more than mo- I would say. Most people have more than one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just so you can do what you want for a game, and then you can go back to everything. It's else. definitely a self policing format it, with it, your friends. With at your home. friends, yeah. I mean, if you're going to a tournament, you have to be prepared for this kind of stuff. So you have to you have to bring out uh, some of your equipments. Maybe if you're playing a Voltron uh, deck that makes your your commander indestructible, like uh, Dark Steel Plate. You know, it might not seem like it might seem like a really big mana sink, but It'll protect you, and if your deck revolves around your commander surviving, you need to do everything you can do to make your commander survive. Yeah. It can't just be combo. It can't just be power-up. I have that problem a lot of times. I just <laughs> want to put every combo card in my deck, but you know, sometimes she Ray Shizo's Caretaker needs Lightning Greaves so that it doesn't get target removal. And then you remove the Lightning Greaves, and then you kill she <laughs> Don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to combat she Ray is make it cost nine or but, 11. But now the best way to combat mass removal, target removal, uh, is to counter the spell. That was actually my last option. Okay. I put I, it on there. It It is a good way to do it, mm-hmm. but then you're stuck in specific colors. What if you don't want to play blue? There's a black counter spell. One. <laughs> There's a white counter spell. Well, that one's not full counter. That's just unless they pay more. <laughs> That's true. Mana tithe. Mana tithe. No. So I agree. Mm-hmm. I, I put it on there as a nod. And as you can see here, I'll show you. I have a big smiley face <laughs> next to the no of counter. Of course you do. Counter spell because, you know, classic me. Mm-hmm. I'm the worst. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I, I think I went a different route when I first started thinking about it. And I said, well, commanders that are indestructible themselves are inherently stronger against mass removal. Obviously, as long as it's not exile. Right. Um, so the ones that pop into my head, like first are, is the God cycle from the Theros block. Mm -hmm. All, every single one of them is indestructible. Yeah. So you have to exile that. And they're also not creatures Mm -hmm. until they have the certain devotion Mm -hmm. and they, and even at that point, they're still an indestructible enchantment, which good luck removing that. Yeah. Unless someone pulls out their merciless eviction, it's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. Correct. It's the only one I can think of off the top of my head as well. And those are really, really difficult commanders to deal with because mm-hmm. then when they're a creature, they're still indestructible. Yep. You can't even pat the exile that. Mm-mm. And a lot of people um, play those commanders with the intention of keeping them as an enchantment. Yeah. So they don't play a ton of pips the little colored circles mm-hmm. on their cards to turn in, in some cases you definitely want to turn them on yeah but in many cases like the perforos like the mono red perforos yeah. you want to keep that not you a want to keep that not a creature yeah by making a bunch of tokens mm-hmm. or at least that's the way that i've seen it no, and i've seen it work it. really well how many target how many target spells that says exile target enchantment can you think of i can't think of 
I actually can't think of any. I can think of cards like Chaos Warp to shuffle a permanent in. Yeah. They don't have Hexproof, so right. there's that. Right. But that was just, that, that's the first way that mm-hmm. I went with this. Well, if you're going to try to play and there's just a ton of mass removal, well, who cares? Mm-hmm. For you then, sure. if you're playing one of these. Mm-hmm. And there's um, 15 gods that yeah. allow you to do that because there's the five mono color and then there's 10 two color. They all have indestructible. And then there's also from Amonkhet, there's the gods that when they die, they go to your graveyard, then you stick them back in your hand and they don't actually cost extra. So you've got the scorpion God, the scarab God and the locust God. Yep. Those were, and then even the new ones that go three deep on top of your library and when they die. And that's die or become exiled. Correct. Yeah. So, so that's, that dodges it completely. I think all the gods mm-hmm. are really good in this to answer this question. Yeah. That was where I went first. No, that's good. And, and, you know, you are limited a little bit on your color combinations, but those mm-hmm. decks are good. Well, you have all 10. I mean, you well, can't, you're you not playing like a do... three color deck. Sure. R- right. In some, in some cases a one, but you're, but, um, I get what you're saying. Yeah. There. I mean, the, the decks are fantastic. I mean, don't, don't sleep on Locust God. That's for sure. It's real good. Yeah. It's real good. Get those little hasty, hasty bugs. Hasty one ones. Hasty one ones. Don't forget your Rakdos charm, everybody. Yep. Don't get got like I got got. <laughs> um, the next one that I have is um, <clears throat> alternate win cons. Playing okay. with cards like Approach of the Second Sun mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and the like. Um, if they have mass removal, I mean, there's some cards that you're just going to you know lose with. Um, but like Felidar Sovereign is pretty cool. Yeah. You win the game. It's a life gain strategy. Um, Approach of the Second Sun is good. Um Cards that, I mean, in some cases, cards that just say, if you meet X criteria, you win. Mm-hmm. You know, you could play some more of those. I We are huge proponents of have a backup plan. Always. Because the number of times my number one plan has gone south. Like we recently played, I, I just built Lazav the Multifarious, and I had someone play Anafens of the Foremost. Well, whenever a creature would go to the graveyard from anywhere, whether it's from the battlefield or your hand, Mm -hmm. you exile it instead. Well, he needs creatures in the graveyard. Otherwise you just lose. So that game, I actually did just lose yeah, because I did not have a backup plan. So I need to figure out the backup plan. Absolutely. Um, Unfortunately, one of the comments that, that this user did have is the group also doesn't like consistent combo wins. Sure. Um, and we'll only tolerate them if it's done to end the game after a lock. So, yes, if they're board wipe, board wipe, board wipe, board wipe, and you go, okay, fine, I'm going to Sahili rate Felidar Sovereign, Felidar Guardian. Felidar Guardian. Felidar Guardian, and, and win. I mean, if we're going to board wipe 12 times. Then you have to go for it. And like, you have to I'm, go for it. Let's just play a new game then. Um, I also think commanders that aren't always cast are really good here. Cast uh, commanders with eminence or, or commanders that do play good stuff decks. I don't really play those decks. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an, I have an Edgar Markov deck yeah. that I just upgraded from the pre-con. That's a really good deck. You never play him. And when you play one creature, you get two creatures. Yeah. Um, Aloro, Ageless Ascetic. Oh, I love You just Aloro. gain life. And you almost never cast it. So right. there's those and, and you're playing in three colors there. You can just play or you could play into, I guess the next thing is playing into board wipes by playing commanders like you play. So mono black sacrifice. So that, that, that type of deck also can get around your board wipe exile problem. You put out a sack outlet. Someone casts merciless eviction on creatures. You go, okay, in response, I'll sack all my creatures and they go to the graveyard and they don't get exiled now. Correct. So, yeah, that's definitely a way to get around that and my preferred way to play. And and reanimator, you know, that that mm-hmm. that's fine too cuz if the creatures are just constantly dying, which it sounded like it was more of like a damnation wrath of god blasphemous act type type deal. Yes. In in this situation it was less of merciless eviction, M- but I think you and I see merciless merciless eviction way more then I think we see the exile one yeah. just so often. Yeah. And it's a, don't get me wrong. It's a really good I card. I think the best, the best one is, is the best one. The best one. The best one <laughs> is Blasphemous Act. In one my mana. opinion. One mana. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it costs like three. I'm, a, I'm cool paying three, but if I have to pay more than three, people play out some more creatures. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you can't kill my 14-14 with it though. True. 
I don't know what card I'm talking about in particular right now, but <laughs> <laughs> but in those cases is when you just swing and then they go block. And yeah, cool. I can deal thirteen now and just dies. And they go, Boom. man, I wish I had block now. <laughs> I could have just taken that two damage. Yeah, could have taken that two or that one. Um, and then um, my last note on here was counter sell, counter spells, big smiley face. Oh, big smiley face. And in in the in the thread, someone had said play mono blue brawl i mean it's a deck you can play don't don't do that but someone else said under that play tail rand you can play the same counter spells but then you can win with the drakes that you made right instead instead of just just dirtling dirtling because brawl is not fun for anyone no even the person playing it is miserable probably although Mm. i do know some people out there that just love to play control and i'm not pointing fingers right now i promise he's not even smirking at (laughs) me (laughs) i do like it i i'm just saying no like there are people at our local game stores that that we play with that they really love just controlling they just like this is my type of game i want to play a three-hour game and and that's fine that's fine a lot of people do yeah you like it i don't i'm gonna try to combo kill you sure Yep. That's not for everyone. Get in and get out and play like three games before you're done with Commander for the day. Not mm-hmm. one. I'm fine with playing a long game if there's like swings and stuff and backs and forth, but I don't like playing a long game where no one gets to do anything. Backs and forth. Backs <laughs> and forths. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the notes that I wrote down. That's what I would tell this person. Yeah. I would say you've got lots of options here. Yep. Yeah. Obviously, budget is is a thing some of these gods are more expensive than others Mm -hmm. some of them were just reprinted the mono red perforos and athreos god of the dead were both just reprinted so whether or not those mystery boosters yeah Mm -hmm. yeah whether or not that price actually goes down at all because of that i don't know we'll find out but but i mean there's there's also another theros block coming out here soon we might see more of these indestructible gods maybe different versions maybe the same cards as reprints i don't think they're gonna be reprints i think they're gonna be new ones which i'm fine with i agree i'd rather see i'm sad it's only one because i want to see all 10 again and i don't want to see the monocolored ones i don't mind the monocolored ones i'd rather see i just like playing with two color cards more than i do monocolored cards that's just me you think there'll be a a three color god somewhere like some they're gonna they're gonna just shake things up and be like now we have a three color. Ooh, look at me. I added a color. I mean, that would be. They're in the underworld. Could they just make Athreos and add like blue to it for Esper Athreos? Blue Threos? Blue Threos? <laughs> we, okay, you heard it here. Blue Threos. Blue if that comes out and uh, there's an Esper Athreos, yep. um, we're going we're gonna to have a party that next episode yeah, after we're, Blue Threos is Threos. <laughs> revealed. <laughs> <laughs> regardless of what the creature does will be my new esper commander yeah i mean it's right now it's a loro it's just artifacts like it's just well, good and it stuff. was and it was um it was send, send triplets. triplets but he didn't play the commander every so. time send triplets came out it was removed from the board every single time well, no one wants you to see their hand and in the first two games i played where i did not play send triplets i won so i said why am i playing send triplets and not a loro where i can just gain life so that's what I do now. Just, but Blue Threos, Blue Threos is going to be It will be that one, Asperger whatever it is. <laughs> and maybe it'll cost white, blue, black. Period. Yeah. and Just and cost three. It'll be a 14-14. Oh, yeah. No, I don't think... Trample, we, haste, vigilance, <laughs> indestructible. I, th- I think if they make it three colors, it'll stay still stay... Oh, no. I, it might move up like the rest of them. Yeah. Those those The two colored ones were all... Four or five mana, I think total i i think some were more wasn't one of them like seven no no i'm thinking why do i think aroas is more maybe it's because that's like his power isn't it like a seven five he gives all your stuff menace and they can't be dealt damage right during combat combat. right so they just like oh i swing and yeah it's like dolmen gate on a creature yeah with menace and there's xenagos too which is just he's a big beefy boy makes your big beefy boys even more big beefy yep that that's how we won at command fest well we beat a xenagos or you're right you're right we beat it we won through because we you turned, turned xenagos off. off you turned xenagos off we turned them off um there's an example of a god you want turned on xenagos sometimes because he can just double himself and swing xenagos yeah you do want turned on mm-hmm. 
Are there any other gods that you do want turned on? I can't think of any that you would want to actually be turned on. Everyone else, their passives are just really good. I mean, maybe Iroas, just because... For swinging? Yeah, sure. Yeah, because he can't get... I mean, they're all indestructible. I think, like, the uh, Afara and Karametra, the ones that ramp or blink and help you draw cards, mm-hmm. you both want those... You always want those turned off. Yeah, you want them being shamans. You, correct. All the time. All the time. When they're a creature, it's cool to block. Mm-hmm. If you're playing Afara, you've got a better shot of keeping her there because mm-hmm. you're playing blue. Yep. But um, Afara can ramp pretty pretty well, but she does cost like five. Yeah. So she's expensive. I th- I think she costs five. Yeah, but. I think that's right. Um, do you have any other any other suggestions for this person? I I honestly would just say talk to your play group. Just have a, a night where you play something different. That would be. I think that would be my number one suggestion. Um, other than that, you know, some of the stuff we talked about today. If you have to build your deck around your play group, you have to build your deck around your play group. You know, people play graveyard hate because I play graveyard decks. Bojukaba gets added to any deck that I have that plays black. Yep. Got ha- it's got to happen. I, Coil's like, uh, it's turn four and I have 17 cards in the graveyard. <laughs> Do I win? No, not today. You know, I've played against your Lazav deck five times <laughs> and every single time you have buried alive either in your starting hand or you draw into it by turn three yeah this week this past week we played at commander and he did have a spell to reanimate the creature that was going to basically kill him and my one other opponent mm-hmm. and i had the timely counter spell yep. that i got to use because i played a stupid mox amber <laughs> and i had the one extra mana yep it worked it did work. So I wasn't about to win next turn, but two turns from then probably. <laughs> sure, but you needed that counter spell. <laughs> I, mean, I, sure. I needed to get that creature out. Um our next our next item, which is new for mm-hmm. us, is Commander of the Week. Yes. I'm really excited. So yes. this is gonna be a segment where we take a commander deck and we break it down by its contents. Mm-hmm. Um not too in depth, just to kind of talk about it. Yep. Um so we're gonna start actually with a deck that you all helped us vote on. Yes, thank you so much for all of your suggestions. I put a poll out on Twitter asking for what my next commander deck should be, and uh, an overwhelming majority decided that they wanted me to build Morophon Erything Tribal. Everything Tribal. So what this deck aims to do is play... Um, so so Morophon, uh, when he enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type. And creatures of the chosen type cost Wooburg less to cast. So I aimed to play a deck with a bunch of blink spells so that I could blink Morophon, have him come in as different creature types, and to play just... V- valuable cards cards with that cost wooberg or cost wooberg minus one color uh so i could just basically free cast them there wasn't any particular uh aim other than these cards in and of themselves are good all the four color commanders that they printed back in 2016 i want to say 16 is it was it 16 that they printed like Kianus Kiana, and Tiro. Kianus and Tiro. Kianus and Tiro. Atraxa. Atraxa. Um, uh, uh, I should just pull out my, my deck list real quick because that would make it a little bit easier. Kianus and Tiro was from um, Commander 2016. Yeah. So all the 16 commanders are you know good in itself and they're four colors. So I get to cast them for free. Um I get to cast uh, assuming, Maelstrom Archangel. Assuming he's set on whatever creature type that is. That's correct. Which you have ways to do it. So I did play against this deck, and it was probably the best the deck performed. It, it performed. We, <laughs> we had to all work together, <laughs> but we did it so, in the end. So Xur the Enchanter is a card that you maybe wouldn't see in here. You would think, oh, even if he calls out wizards, it costs one mana to get Xur out. That seems good, but he's probably spending two or three mana for the blink spell. So what's the point? Um, and there's these three mana enchantments that are just absolutely insane in this deck. Um, one of them is just really good in any Morophon creature deck called Descendant's Path. So Descendant's Path's a two and a green uh, enchantment. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card that shares a creature type with a creature you control, which Morophon is every single creature type, you may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Otherwise, put that card on the bottom of your library. There are instances where this makes it so you miss your land drop. That does happen. 
But there's also instances where you get like a free Eldrazi. I don't play Eldrazi in my deck, but if you're playing more fun Eldrazi, you get a free cast of an Eldrazi with that. Insane card. Um, the other enchantment that's really, really good in this deck is Arcane Adaptation. For- which, which by the way, both of these were out when we played, so that worked even better for yes, you. Yes, I did get my Zer the Enchanter, and I did grab both of these enchantments with my Zer. And a Rhystic Study later. And I grabbed a We went through those later. three things, yes. but continue. Yes. <laughs> so Arcane Adaptation says, uh, as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control are the chosen type in addition to their other types. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. So this includes creatures in your library, in your graveyard, in exile, however relevant uh, those areas are. Uh, and there is a five mana black enchantment called conspiracy that does the exact same thing but is not fetchable by Xur. so what arcane adaptation allows you to do is choose a creature type um the same creature type hopefully that morophon is called out as when he enters the battlefield and now all of your creatures are that type and all of your creatures cost wooberg less to cast and in this particular deck that pretty much means everything is free now in our game i was holding a the first sliver in my hand. A, the first. A, the first sliver, (laughs) uh, which gives all sliver spells cascade. Um, So I went and fetched for my arcane adaptation with Xur, and I called out slivers, and I decided to cast my first sliver for free, and then uh, cast, oh, who was it that I cast after that? You got uh, Saski the Unyielding. Saskia. So those five commanders, by the way, you've got Attracts the Praetor's Voice, Brea Ethereum, yep. Shaper, uh, Yudris, uh, Males from Wanderer, yep. Saskia the Unyielding, and Canaeus and Tear of Miletus. Mil- yes. Miletus? Of yeah. Miletus. 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 So uh, all of those cards are in the deck, which is pretty great. Yep. Um, so in just to, to fill out some of the uh, other cards... Um, in there, uh, I have a few additions. I decided to put in a, a Kamal's Druidic Vow um, in the deck. That's one of those legendary spells, right? Yeah. You can't cast it unless you have a legendary permanent. What does Correct. that one do? So X, green, green. Look at the top X cards of your library. You may put any number of land and or legendary permanent cards with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield and put the rest into your graveyard. So the deck does run mostly legendary creatures, as you might be able to tell. Mm -hmm. Uh, The non-legendaries being the uh, four-color Nephilim that they printed in the Guild Pact. Yeah, it was the original Ravnica City of Guilds block. Yep. Oh, Um, gee. And those cards are really good, especially when you can get them out for free. Um, I do run a Brago or Brago in order to blink some stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm adding a Captain Sisse to the deck to yeah. go search for some legendary stuff. Sure. Uh, Kenrith the Return King is just super value. Really, good <laughs> we, did remove, we did remove that <laughs> one. No, you cannot use that. And there was also a Terracidon flipped to take out all your white mana yep. at one point because we needed you to not have it anymore. Yeah, that was uh, that hurt. Because um, you also had an enchantment on Morophon to blink it. Yes, I had Flicker form on Morophon along with kindred summonings on morophon the the deck could not have literally i don't think you could have played that couldn't have played better, better that time that deck, it just ended up being three on one because we were going to lose if we didn't. <laughs> so so that happened and i'm and i decided that i had too many blink spells in the deck and i need to put a few better cards in than the, than the blink spells um the mimeoplasm and the new volrath shapeshifter mm-hmm. are in there just as uh a, a, some extra value in case things start getting wiped uh on my board um, which it is bound to happen. How much land ramp do you play in there? Uh, I, you did cast a cultivate. I, I saw that. A cultivate, a far seek. Um, I didn't have hour of promise in there. That's being added. Uh, a Kadama's reach, a rampant growth, and a vegetation? tempt with discovery. Oh, um, sure. Tempt is the same. Is it cost four? It costs yeah three degrees. It's the same amount as an explosive vegetation, but you could potentially get four. I highly suggest playing tempt which if you follow me on twitter you saw i played a tempt with discovery at my local game store and i had everyone search and i found my three tron lands and a temple of the false god oh man nine whole manas yeah and they come in untapped which was awesome (laughs) (laughs) yeah so the deck i think played really well yep legendary everything blinks i'm it's it's definitely unique. I haven't seen anyone play it, and it's it's really fun to play. 
Um, highly recommend. If you didn't see the the deck list, uh, you did tweet that out a couple of days ago. You were actually looking for one card to add to it. You finished that out, yeah. so you can find that on Twitter. And then you're editing it right now. So yeah. once we do, we'll post the final deck list. If anyone's interested or has any questions, mm-hmm. yeah, tweet I, at us. It was, um, sorry, just to add in real quick. It was uh, the, the TCG player uh, has a 7% back because of all the bannings that happen. Sure. So that's, that's how I'm getting a couple of these additions, some cards that my uh, local game store uh, did not have, like the card conspiracy. It's pretty rare that a local game store might have that. So definitely support your local game stores, but if you can't, we got some bu- some bonus bucks on TCG player. So. Are you ready to play some Would You Rather? I am so ready to play some Would You Rather. I'm so ready. Um, okay. So we each have two Would You Rathers. Mm-hmm. And I, I'll i start, I'll start with um, an easy one. Okay. So this is re- related to mechanics that aren't printed on a commander today. Okay. Okay. So, and this, this um, might not age well because next year with us getting like seventy some new all commanders, be on commanders. I, I assume most mechanics, if not all, I mm-hmm. mean some won't work. Like a cycling commander might not be so great unless there's a way to put it in your hand. Okay. That'd be kind of cool though. Yeah. But um, would you rather see a legendary creature printed with level up? or extort i think they're both really good i think they'd both be really good in commander yeah they would be really good both um extort would be a, for sure like life gain somehow it might i assume would be white black but level up could be in any color yeah level up level up would probably like if i okay so if i had to pick one just from a I want to see it played wise I'd, I'd pick level up all day but yeah, if, but if I wanted to pick a commander, I could absolutely just totally break. I would pick the extort one. I, you think, extort? I think that's really strong. I think extort is busted, yeah. and I think <laughs> I think extort just playing um, cryptgast, even though it's just a one of, mm-hmm. sometimes can get you. You know, if you do, if you cast three spells with that all that extra black mana, oh yeah, like and I'll just extort each one. It's totally fine. Yeah, um, but level up. I, I think there's a level up card. I assume there's a level up card in every color. I mean, I know there's blue. Mm-hmm. I know there's black, mm-hmm. red, because mm-hmm. there's the there's like the, the dragon. dragon. Mm-hmm. Green's got an elf, and a, and the one that makes elephant tokens. Yes. Um, is there white? Is there a level up in white? Yes, but I can't think of it right now. Uh, um, but there totally is. But I I, ju- I just think that um, if they um, printed a legendary creature. I'm just gonna I'm gonna check it on Scryfall right now. Um, With level up, I'm gonna search for level up and and legendary mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. see if I can find. I oh, with legendary? Because oh, no, no, just don't kidding. search for don't legendary. search legendary. Just just white level just, up. Just yeah, we're thinking you 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 suggested level up on a legendary, just because it doesn't exist yet. C- correct, it doesn't exist. Right, and I I think it's level. I'm just gonna look for level. Mm-hmm. because i i don't know if it's level hyphen up it's so like if if your commander wasn't your main target for someone else's uh spot removal before it would be on level up on level up it definitely is so i was thinking just in my head just a second go ahead you found it there is yeah there's there's i see a white blue black yeah there's at least one and i don't see rare on all of them necessarily but right. there is one in every color oh hex drinker there, there's oh, there's green. a new mythic green, the yep. blue one. There's an X, there's one that says you take a turn between every turn. Oh yeah, that's a lighthouse chronologist. chronologist. Oh, I like that card a lot. Um, yeah, I, the Karg, I played that in Kargan Dragon Lord is the is the mythic uh, red one. Mm-hmm. Um, Black has the vampire. Yep. Oh, and, and then Gruul Draz Assassin. And Gruul Draz Assassin. I think. Well, I think that is the one that I was thinking of. Oh. Is yeah, a it's, it's a vampire assassin. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I see white has transcendent master, which has level up of level 12 plus, but it becomes a Yikes. nine, nine lifelink for oh. three though. And oh. level up for one. It so becomes I mean, a Sarah ascendant. It becomes a nine, nine lifelinker Isn't with Sarah's, indestructible. Was Sarah ascendant a five, five? Sarah Senate becomes a six, 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 I think six lifelink. A, I think it's a one, one. It gets plus five, plus five. It doesn't flying. get. It doesn't have flying. I thought it gains flying as well. Um, Sarah. 
because then like turns angelic. I thought, but I don't play white very often, so I could definitely be wrong. Sarah Ascendant is. Oh, and it has flying. You're right. Thirty yeah. or more life gets put, so it becomes a six six flying lifelink. Yeah. Yeah. So um, level up, and I I just thought extort would be extort is just extort, but level up could go anywhere because right. you could say when you get to this level, you have. Mm-hmm. Something crazy. And I was I was thinking like. How does it like if okay if your commander is going to be the main target with and then it's also going to have level up like would it be okay to say you know it retains its level up counters if it goes back to the command zone but then I feel like you're just playing experience. Cor- I agree. In that case, I think I think you're playing experience. So in this case, though, maybe it could be when you level up. I don't know. Once you get to like level four or something, mm-hmm. it, it gets an ability that works with the deck, but also hex proof. And then when it gets yeah. to like level 10 plus mm-hmm. and maybe the level up is just like a generic mana or sure. something. I don't know. Like you can start doing it definitely on the next turn. Mm-hmm. Um, it does something that that color wants. Like once this creature is at level 10, it also has flying and tap to draw four cards or something. Mm-hmm. Like if you're in blue, I'm, sure. I just, I think level up would be, I think it would really be, fun to have on a, a commander. I think it would be like if the top end of that level up was, Super, super strong. They'd have to be very careful, uh, Wizards R&D, on what colors they allow that commander to be in. I would suggest staying away from both blue and white, some of the easier colors to make infinite mana with, with with dramatic scepter combo and with bomberman combo or uh, the green-white with um, Vizier uh, and the druid so dramatic scepter is isochron scepter with dramatic reversal Mm -hmm. you pay two and dramatic reversal says untap all non-land permanents you control so as as long as you have at least three mana in in mana rocks Mm -hmm. you you net one colorless mana yeah do you want to explain bomberman real quick that that, the lingo for this it's a more competitive term um so Bomberman combo uses a really expensive car, card called LED, Lion's Eye Diamond, and Ariok Champion. Uh, Ariok Champion is one in a white return, an artifact from your graveyard to the battlefield. And uh, Lion's Eye Diamond says, sacrifice Lion's Eye Diamond, discard your hand, add three mana of any color um, that you want to your mana pool. So you can make infinite white mana to do infinite activations, and then you can with all your infinite white mana make infinite that one's any a color really mana. expensive one yes. dramatic reversal ice crown scepter is cheap. very affordable absolutely in comparison i mean ice crown scepter is a 15 dollar card i think alone so that is the expensive part but dramatic reversal i think costs like a buck yeah and, and then, then any LED. rocks any rock will do it right and yeah as long as you have three mana that's all you need um all right yeah that that's my would you rather yeah all that's right. my first one my turn would you rather play without counter spells or play without removal? I I'd rather play without counter spells. For someone who likes counter spells as much as I do, mm-hmm. you have to have removal in the format in Commander. If I'm playing, I guess does it does the format matter? Are we playing one v one? I we think playing multiplayer. Uh, what's it? Just does your answer differ? Yeah, and one v one, I don't care so much about removal because I can counter spell you, and mm-hmm. then I can just move on. In multiplayer, counter spell I don't think matters as much. I got gotcha. you. Unless you I have a way that. to draw more cards, you're good luck staying up when you're one for oneing yourself. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, the the only deck that I play counter spells in is my my top tier deck. And I, I, that you plan to win the turn you're going, it, but off. I also run removal in it though too. But I play a lot more counter spells. But overall, I play a lot more removal. You probably want removal. Yeah, I definitely in want it more. I definitely want removal. So spot that. removal or mass removal? If you only had to pick one, I would do spot. So no wraths for you. Is that because you don't want to kill your own creatures as well? Most or? of the time, sure. Okay. Most of the time, I would say yeah. But. um there's usually one creature out on the battlefield that's causing a problem for me yeah. in most cases. And it's only ever like one. It's never both of these people have the same are causing me a problem. It's like, no, it's just, it's always just one and it's just sitting there. I, I do feel like our budget commander games, that's the opposite. I feel like there's more than one in a lot of times in those ones, <laughs> but that's, that's the one instance I could think of where it's, uh, there's an Eryxmethes and there's a, Oh, what's that blue dragon that Nick played? 
Nezahal? Nezahal. There's an Eryxmethes. The dinosaur. Yeah, there's an Eryxmethes and a Nezahal. And I can't take care of both of them. One's going to make infinite mana. One's going <laughs> to swing at me and get to 21. <laughs> and one is infinitely harder to remove, so I'm probably going to go for the Eryxmethes. And, and I did, right? Well, Nick did. Yeah, he Nick, did. Nick took me out pretty good on okay. that one. Yeah. Um, okay, so he, here's another one. Okay. So... Um, would you so you're at a local game shop okay right, and you're just playing all right hold on hold well on. you I'm get to get there. in the moment get in the moment you do you open okay, the door I'm there you walked in i smell cardboard you smell that's a good smell yeah someone just opened a pack of cards oh. <laughs> so you sit down to play mm-hmm. and you don't you realize you have like your deck with you but you don't really have anything else with you and you're like oh shoot i didn't bring my play mat i didn't bring my dice i didn't bring mm-hmm. would you mm-hmm. rather play a deck that requires like a hundred different tokens and you don't have any of them or, or play a deck that needs like 500 dice to be put on them, but you have to ask everybody else for the dice and you feel bad either way, but it's obnoxious. Which, which case would you rather be stuck in needing the tokens or needing everyone else's dice? And when I say dice, I mean, everything you play is put in counters on something. You got minus counters, you got plus counters. So you need multiple colors of dice. So I'm I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the dice one, um, and maybe this is a cop out answer, but I also feel like with the tokens I will also need to borrow everybody's <laughs> dice. So maybe this is a, a, a more uh, more willing way to get people. And you know it's a it's a nice it's a it's a mini game for the rest of the pod too, where it goes. All right, we need we need red ones and green ones and blue ones. Like let's all combine our dice into a big pool and see what happens. <laughs> Uh, but I would also feel extremely embarrassed about that. I've I've had it before where I, I brought a deck. I, I have a Noyan Dar deck. I've said that before, and it yep. requires me to put counters on creatures. And um, I didn't bring my dice. It was before I got like a, a ta- one of those towers that yeah. have the dice built mm-hmm, in. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm not I'm not gonna play this today. I'm gonna play the deck where I have everything <laughs> that I need because I don't want to. You know, there's some people that only have enough dice for them, or they don't have yeah. a ton and they're playing it, or it's just you know. Uh, I've had it before where someone grabs all their dice up and you're like, Oh, you have a few of mine. And you know, sometimes you lose your dice and you don't want to do that. Mm -hmm, So, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm always for sharing, but I I think I agree that I would probably play the, um, the dice. I'd rather need to borrow dice because I think people would have those more than they would have the tokens that I need. Yeah. Cause I feel like in commander, you never, if you actually have all your tokens for the deck you play. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah, you, I'm impressed you, by you. I mean, I want to give you a gold star. Yeah, you get you get a hug and a gold star. But I, I feel like we started buying um, the dry erase tokens. Those are, I really For like that exact that. reason. Although I like having my own tokens. Yeah. But, you know, in my, in my Omnath Locus your of nice Rage deck. sleeved I, Omnath tokens. Those are, they are sleeved. I need sometimes like 30 of them out. And it's like, yeah. well, no one's carrying around 30 on now. I mean, someone is, someone is, but I'm carrying, I think 10 and I always need more than 10. Yep. So at that point, just bring like three of them and then just use, you have tapped, you have tapped ones, you have untapped ones that are summoning sick and untapped ones that are not summoning sick. Correct. And then someone starts putting minus one, minus one counters on your tokens and then you just stare at them. Like, really? That you does doing get, this right now? That does happen, though. <laughs> and then you have to have them with the minus counters. And you need them with the, you know, the minus one, minus O oh counter. I've never seen anyone actually play that. There are some weird counters. I played an armor thrall in she once. That gives things plus zero, plus two counters. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Here's mine for you. Would you rather... So you're playing a you're playing a Wooberg deck. Okay, I've got every color: white, blue, black, red, green. That's right. Would you rather play with only basics and fetches? You can have any fetch, all the fetches that you want, and basics, or no fetches, and then you can play any multicolor lands that you want. Uh, basics for sure. Basics and fetches. Basics and the fetches, sure. Because I do not like. Um, so no command tower for you then. That is that's probably still fine. So I've got okay. I've got Terramorphic Expanse, yep. I've got Evolving Wilds, I've got Fabled Passage, the ten sh- the ten fetches. Mm-hmm. Are there any other? I've got okay, so I can't have any 
I'm going to argue, though, that I get the green land that also has sack it, and I get to go fetch two non two basic lands. Yeah, so uh, Blighted Woodland. Yes. And you can, can have, I have that? You can have Myriad Landscape. I get a Myriad Landscape. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. I think, okay. I, I think I can make it because I'll play... I'll play cards like Cultivate. I'll go way heavier on green. Mm-hmm. I usually do. Way heavier. Sure. In my five color decks, you play more green than you don't mm-hmm. because you're going to play green ramp spells. And I'm just going to hope to grab... Green as your first. Green. Basics. Well, hopefully you open with one green. Mm-hmm. Like you're going to have two, right? So you're going to have like green and I don't know. The worst one would probably be to have like for... for well, you're, play- of- you're playing Wooberg. So you might have white, boo, blue, red, black. White, boo. White, blue. Blah, blue red black no green in starting hand oh yeah but i would i would nope i would keep that <laughs> <laughs> i would keep that because i probably have something that i can play that's not a ramp card you know but sometimes you do you just if you want to play a five color deck and you're on a budget you're that's something that a lot of people deal with yep and i don't think it's that big of a deal if you're not playing with people who are playing with 10 shocks 10 fetches sure i think if your play group is more casual which we have been recently playing yeah. a lot more casual. It's been a lot. That's totally it's been fine. A lot of fun playing casual. That's too. totally fine. What would you do? I would definitely play multicolor lands, no fetches. You would. Oh yeah, I really like my multi lands, and I feel like okay. So I have this frame of reference with Morophon. Morophon, I I play like three or four multicolor lands. And I play a lot of basics. I play, well, a lot. I play 20 basics. I play four of each color. And that's because if I get stuck without any of my combo pieces, I have to be able to cast all of my creatures. And they are four or five color. So I need to actually keep it nice and spread. I should be shifting a little bit more towards green. And I might end up doing that in the next. But that's where my multicolor lands come in. Like I have a Sultai land. Um, oh, you have the tap, the, the tri, the tri, the I, have, tri I have a couple tri lands, a command tower and stuff. And, um, the evolving wilds doesn't do it for me. The terramorphic expanse doesn't do it for me. I don't play the expe- any of the expensive fetches, any of the, the cons fetches sure. or anything in there. Um, but you're not playing the basic ones even to grab a basic. I mean, I can grab a basic, but a lot of times it's like, it depends what I draw. What card, what, what land I go search for right now. I also get the one from Modern Horizons. Which one is that? You get Prismatic Vista. I don't own one in real life, but I get it in that. You get one. You, you, so I think I would, yeah, I think I would do that. I mean, there's a lot of fetches. There is. To get to five basics is fine. And I also don't, I mean, have you, I'm going to ask you, this is, have you played against Back to Basics or Blood Moon before? Um, it feels bad. <laughs> <laughs> I have played against back to basics once, but I think I was playing a monocolor deck. At oh, the then time. you're good. Then you're good to go. Yeah, I don't think I've ever played it. I played against it in one of my, uh, one of my stronger decks that I play shocks in or anything. Sure. So I played Noy and Dar against that before. And Ooh. every one of my creatures did not untap and they were also the mana I needed. Yeah. So that's, I think that's why. Yeah. That I'm glad we were different on that. Yeah. I yeah. honestly, if I had, if if someone said nope, you have to play the multicolor. It's like, mm-hmm. okay. I mean, I'm fine either way. Yeah. Um, I do have I do have one more okay. for you. This this one's kind of just for fun. Would you rather discard a card, sacrifice a nine land permanent, or take three damage? Repeat this process ten times. I am going to, <laughs> assuming that I played mono blue, I'm going to discard ten cards and then kill you on my next turn. <laughs> How many how many permanents do I have on the battlefield? Do I have like thirty bugs I can sack from the Locust God, or you actually have uh, just damnation, so you have zero zero permanents on the battlefield? Mm. Or you can choose to sacrifice your Perforos that you have. That's the one you have one permanent on battlefield Perforos, and you have nine cards in hand. Just to end the game, I die. <laughs> I'm gonna take three damage <laughs> all ten times, <laughs> and I hope I had like twenty nine life. You have 31 life. I will sack some to Goblin <laughs> Bombardment and I will shoot myself. <laughs> uh, well, I think that does it for this week. Yeah, that's all. Um, so if you haven't seen, we did a teaser for our vlog post for Command Fest Chicago. That will be out this Thursday. We posted that on Monday. Um, 
Thank you all for listening. If you want to contact us, you can find our podcast on Twitter at Guardian Pod. You can find me at AT Flory. You can find me at Squeaky Pig. Mm. Uh, also, take a look for hashtag Guardian Project Pod uh, to find our posts and episodes. Uh, we'd like to hear from you, so send along your comments and any topics you'd like us to talk about, and we'll go over those on the next episode. You can also email us at guardianprojectpod at gmail.com. Yeah, specifically, if you want to do. Um you want to send, send, send us a suggestion for the commander of the week that'll be something that we're going to try to as a reoccurring segment every single week so if you want someone broken down send that to us and that's it thanks see ya bye so pioneer came out no changes you can just say that up here that's the very end yeah this is a pioneer. Did it literally just come out like it two just, seconds ago? It came out. It came out. Uh, this is live, y'all. <laughs> one hour ago, according to this post on Reddit, November 18th, 2019, Pioneer Band announcement. Pioneer, no changes. You can keep using your Okos. And your Once Upon a Time. And your Once Upon a Time. Good luck. Good luck to you, sirs and madams. And everyone else that doesn't go, go by, by sirs or and madams. madams. Goodbye. Goodbye.